For today's cup of coffee, we have another article that comes from Mysterious Universe, and that's by Rick, uh, not Rick, Nick. Rick. Redfern. By this point, I should have this man's I think that's name, name just tattooed. Rick. <laughs> anyway, the <laughs> this is from July 13th of 2021, and I have had such an evening as far as not being able to speak that I'm going to press through. I refuse to allow it to control me. <laughs> She's been stumbling and not I being able have. to speak all day. This, well, half a day. This planetary, this planetary alignment is kicking everyone's ass. Yes, and I'm like, please, we've so long. <laughs> I just want to well, sleep. Leo King had said it was going to be rough, and it had hit him square between the eyes also. Yeah. So, God love him, I understand. He but, was stupid too. Well, yeah, that's rain. That's all you can say. And Mr. Redfern, the title of this article is The Legend of Boggy Creek. I've heard of this one. Could there be a better Bigfoot movie? And he says, nope. And Mr. Redfern writes, Ask most people to name a Bigfoot movie, and in all likelihood they will reply, Harry and the Hendersons. I think I saw that once, and it was just beyond stupid. Uh, the only movie I know of Bigfoot that I remember is Boggy Creek, because that's the one that freaked you out. Yes. Ju- it wasn't I'm getting even- to that. <laughs> I'm getting to that. you jumping the gun on me. It says, many people <laughs> might be surprised to know, however, that more than 50 movies have been made on Bigfoot and other cryptid apes. The list includes The Snow Creature. I saw that one. Don't forget TV shows. Snow Beast. I may have seen that. Willow Creek. Creature from Black Lake. Abominable. The And, let's see, The Sasquatch Gang. Uh, that, that sounds like one of those that. tween movies. Yeah. And The Wild Man of Navidad. As those, yeah, as those within the Bigfoot seeking community for their favorite Bigfoot movie, and the response will likely be a very different one. Numerous Sasquatch affectionados have a particular fondness for a 1972 movie titled The Legend of Boggy Creek. What makes the movie stand out from so many others of its type is that The Legend of Boggy Creek is based upon real events that occurred in and around the small tape of folk, Arkansas, in the early 1970s. And yes, I did have to look up the pronunciation of that because it's spelled F-O-U-K-E, and you could make a very bad mistake with that pronunciation. What is it, folk? It's folk. They said it rhymed with folk. Folk. So, in mountain speak, that's that's how it rolls. I don't know how it sounds down in Arkansas. No uh, one no one knows more about this than Lyle Blackburn, the author of the book, The Beast of Boggy Creek, and other cool zipti- zipti-logical cryptids. Oh, my God. <laughs> they, oh, my God. Oh, other books about cryptids. Let's <laughs> Are you good over there? No, no, I'm not. <laughs> You're having a lot. Like, what, what's wrong? I like so much. Cat got your tongue so something. much. Lyle notes that on May the third, nineteen seventy one, the Texarkana <laughs> Gazette. <laughs> Do not distract me right now. I'm struggling. Let me struggle. <laughs> I see that. That's... Anyhow, printed the first in a oh, series of hair raising reports about a monster that allegedly haunted the woods near folk. The monster was said to be a large, hairy, ape-like creature that walked upright on two legs. It stood nearly seven feet tall, had glowing red eyes, gave off a rank odor, and occasionally let out a horrifying shriek. Yeah, it smells like rotten meat. The description of the monster, said Lyle, quote, was not unlike that of Sasquatch or Bigfoot, but this creature had a decidedly southern slant in that it seemed to be leaner, meaner, and hairier. As more reports came in, it was apparent that the thing, whatever it was, preferred the proximity of Boggy Creek, a ruddy tributary which snakes up and around fork like a long forked tongue, end quote. It wasn't long before a certain character, a man named Charles B. Pierce, became fascinated by the story of the monster of Boggy Creek, a monster that provoked numerous encounters in the wooded neighborhood in mid-1971, 
And it should be noted, too, that Lyle has cataloged reports dating from 1908 through 2010. Ooh. And it is for his 1972 movie, The Legend of Boggy Creek, that Pierce is most well and fondly remembered. Unable to finance the movie himself, he secured funding of a six-figure nature, now this is in the 70s, cause, so that meant more then, yeah. from a trucking company. Yeah. And instead of using a cast filled solely with actors, he elected to use some of the real eyewitnesses to the creature as part of his cast. It nice. was a it was a gamble that could have led yeah, yeah, it was a gamble that could have led to complete and utter disaster of both a financial and critical nature. Instead, the legend of Boggy Creek, released on December the sixth, nineteen seventy two, achieved cult like status and reeled in more than twenty million dollars in the process. Nice. Charles B. Pierce died in twenty ten. He was seventy one years old. Oh wow. Now, as far as having the southern slant of being leaner, meaner, and hairier, okay, in the 70s, unless it had a mullet, no. <laughs> so, because that was oh standard fare. And mullets are coming back, folks, and I'm thrilled they're about more, it. More, they're not... Mm, but they're, they're, they're calling so things, shags. they're calling things mullets that are not. Shags are there is mullets. nothing wrong with a good mullet. Shags There's a lot of people that can rock a mullet. <coughs> Shags are mullets. So this 1972 movie was the one that, when I was a small child, uh, I was born in 65, so that meant when this came out, I was seven. It freaked her out. It totally freaked me out. A seven-year-old kid watching this movie trailer of this big hairy arm breaking through the window of a cab and these people screaming. And it was horrifying. How did n nothing else freak you out like that? No, that was that was what had totally freaked me out. Oh, my God. But it was a series of events. And that's why she doesn't like Bigfoot ever since. Yes. It was a series of events. You've got to realize that I was a small child while Vietnam was still going on. So when they said about the guerrilla fighters, I thought they were actual guerrillas, like, uh, you know, Planet of the Apes. Oh my God. Because at some point through there, I had seen Planet of the Apes. <laughs> so in kid too. brain, absolutely. It was apocalyptic in kid brain. <laughs> Like, oh, God, this is actually happening? No, yeah. it's not. Well, I don't know. I mean, it did for these people in this Arkansas oh, town. Planet of the Apes did not happen. No, plan not yet. Not yet. It ain't gonna happen. I, I don't know. It ain't I don't know. Happen. But anyhow, so, again, with, with kid brain, it's not linear thought necessarily. You know going to happen? Storms. Well, yeah, we've got storms. That's, that's a Big thing. Big booms in the distance. And Blue was kind enough Blue. after doing the cup of coffee oh. the day prior, which was Bride of Bigfoot. He had uh, told me about a channel that's called Survivor Man. And this is with I'll a gentleman named here. Les Shroud. And that he has, uh, episode 11 was the one that I had watched. He's got a series as far as um, Quest for Bigfoot. Uh -huh. And I had watched the director's commentary and I will put you a link for that. Um, but it was actually very intriguing. And I think that he, you know, he had said that some of the evidence that they found, which was not, you know, Bigfoot carcass per se. Yeah. But they had put apples up high in this tree. And they had a brief sec, just split second of something that they could not identify even with their sophisticated equipment and stuff. But they said he said it had to at least been six foot up the tree. Uh, he had placed the bait. I can't remember if it was like seven, eight, nine foot up in there. But what was most interesting, before they got this split second of whatever it was, he saw these huge balls of light in the sky. Ew. And there have been quite a few that have uh, tried, you know, that they surmise there is some kind of link between Bigfoot and aliens. Now, I've heard that quite a bit over the years. And as far as that, the creature that we think of as Bigfoot could itself be some kind of extraterrestrial interdimensional being. 
I choose to believe that it's just an ape. It's a monkey. Well, it's monkey. very large. It's a very large ape, if that Apes is what large. it is. Apes are large. Well, yeah, but I, I mean, we're talking people describing this as seven to nine feet tall. Um, and as far as there are other people that think that it is some kind of former species of mankind. Yeah, I don't know. Well, we had that, that one. We had that cup recently also as far as where they had found the skull of the dragon man and about the different supposed forerunners to humans. Yeah. Which I'm like, mm -mm, no, no. I can which, go out here and find, pick up a rock and tell you one hell of a story and none of it be true. Bullshit to succeed. Uh, well, I, yeah, I mean, I learned from one of the best and that was my father. <laughs> he, could, he could tell you stuff just, and you would believe it. Yeah. And, you know, of course, he, he was joking. He was not, you know, he would eventually go back and tell you the truth, usually. Uh-huh. Usually. Yeah, it was always <laughs> something humorous or, or silly or something. It wasn't malevolent, usually. Usually. <laughs> usually. So, who God. knows about the Bigfoots? I disagree. Big feet. Uh, I disagree about Bigfoot being an alien. I do. I think it's a monkey that has yet to be identified properly. And, uh... That's it. It's a monkey. It's a very intelligent monkey. Well, they... Of course, monkeys are intelligent, so... Yes. Yes, they are, as far as using tools and different things like that. And it was interesting because that Mr. Stroud, I want to make sure I'm pronouncing his name right. Yes. He showed and explained how that bear prints could uh -huh. be mistaken for Bigfoot prints for those who are can't. truly, truly wanting to believe... And that the bears, that they would walk in their own tracks. And, it, of course, it made it look like a larger track. But there was no way that it still looked like a Bigfoot track. Yeah. Which very much looks like, you know, people footprint. Yeah. Except with the arch thing. They, they apparently are flat-footed. I mean, monkeys are flat-footed. Right. So, plus... Bears that walk through their other tracks, you can see where their claws would dig into the mud, too. Right, but he did show the impression, you know, that they had made a cast and stuff. Uh -huh. And how, like I said, if, if somebody is really zealous in, in believing this and searching for something, it's very easy to misinterpret something. I mean, it wasn't an intentional thing. Right. But, you know... If anybody has gone Bigfoot hunting or plans on going, I, I would very much recommend that you watch this man. I appreciate Blue giving me, um, you know, letting me know about this gentleman because I'm, it was a very, it was a very enjoyable documentary. I've heard of him before, but I haven't seen it. I haven't seen any of his stuff, but I'm intrigued. Right. And another one that has discussed some of these things is David Politis. Uh-huh. And that he's another one that, you know, he does uh, Missing 411. And that, you know, these people to just suddenly be gone. Yeah. And then show up miles away. Um, and there were times that he will go uh, as far as a link to some, you know, these people being taken by someone, something. Um, Abduction. Yeah. And within that documentary, there were other accounts of people being um, taken by the Bigfoots. Yeah, like the Bride of Frankenstein. Frankenstein. <laughs> God. Bride of Bigfoot. Right. Big feet. So there are other accounts. I mean, you know, we can't keep up with everything. Yeah. But, yeah, Legend of Boggy Creek, if you have not seen it, Search for it. If it's still on YouTube, I will leave a link. I'm going to have to watch the trailer. I just want to see the trailer that freaks you out. That's all I want to see. Again, I was seven years old. Yeah. I but was, still. I was seven years old and a kid that was growing up with paranormal activity and parents that wouldn't believe me. I mean, yeah. that house is haunted. It is. It still is. 
Whatever yeah. the whatever is in it, I mean, ever so often it's like, whoop, there it goes. Yeah. It's like, oh hi. So anyhow, if you all have had experiences with the supernatural or paranormal, if you've had encounters with UFOs or aliens, cryptids, Bigfoot, if you or someone you know uh, <laughs> has gone on the uh, trail of Bigfoot, let us know if you, as far as Wendigos and Chupacabras. I had, had learned uh, for about a new creature, it's a cryptid or something, that are called um, pale, what was it, it was pale something, pale crawling humanoids. Pale crawling humanoids. Yes. Now what about those, those creatures, those ghosts that are just leg? I haven't got like to that yet. Like they're just legs. Look, have let, you heard of those? Let me research this as I do. I go down the like, They literally look like just legs. Uh, like people say legs for days. No, they're just all legs. <laughs> <laughs> like they got. Well, like, now you can research. They got that a curved one. head and they're just legs. Research that one as you're looking up information on the Wendigo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They look like walking pants, basically. Okay. Jimmy Neutron. Jimmy Neutron, walking pants. They yes. basically look like that. So, and if you had, <laughs> if you had, would like to share with us local legends, family legends and myths, you know, maybe some of your family had some kind of supernatural or paranormal ghost encounter. Stories. Personal ghost stories are what I'm seeking most. Yeah. And it is so hard either for people to admit that they had a an experience mm -hmm. or... I don't know, maybe people are so pressed for time that it's hard for them to sit down and email the account. Could be. Sometimes when you write something, it solidifies it, and people often have an aversion to that. Yeah. So. Like, oh, shit, this wasn't a dream. This, is right, really, ha this right. really happened. When you look at it on paper in black and white, sometimes it makes it more real. Mm -hmm. So I, I get that. I do. But but honestly, if you share these things, and again, it, this is going to be anonymous, so you don't have to worry about that. Yeah. Um, we're not going to make fun of you. We're not going to, you know, shame you or anything like that because it's a matter of trying to get a community together that supports each other. Uh huh. Because if you know, when you have shared experiences, it's always nice having like a su a support group of you know paranormal believers. It's really right. nice having that. Right. It having is. that validation that you're not crazy or something. Right. Or even if you are, as long as you're not hurting yourself or others, it's okay. Yeah. Living your own delusions. <laughs> it's fine. So, fine. any of those things, share with us by sending an email to Cup of Coffee with Scream. Uh, the email address is always in the description box. And, yeah, we're going to get in before the storm truly sets in. Yeah, because it got dark. It's dark. The sky is dark. Yeah, it's dark, dark. So you all have dark, a... Dark, dark, <laughs> dark. You all have a beautiful, blessed day. Bye. Big feet. Big feet.